Right, we are buckled up and we are ready for yet another episode of Thursday Night Live. Now, the one thing I can tell you with 16 days of activism against women and child abuse, there's a sad story that has to be told. We're going to be telling it right here on the show today. A former Mafana Bafana player played for Kaiser Chiefs, he played for Mamelodi Sundowns, played for Jomo Cosmos, and of course, went behind bars. He was sentenced to 27 years in prison. 27 years, he'll tell us how many years he served? What exactly went down? What caused that that happened at the time to happen? We'll break it down right here on the show. So it's a mixed bag of the good, the bad, the ugly. But most importantly, it's also going to be a breakdown of what is good. And when it is good, it becomes so good that we all can celebrate. We all can almost feel like there's a Sia somewhere inside of all of us here. Because since he's come back from the World Cup, since lifting that Webb Ellis Trophy, He's gone around the country, left in a trophy, just absorbing everything that people have been doing on the streets and saying, yeah, we are part of this victory. But little did we know, little did we know that somewhere, somehow in the world, one of the biggest agencies were watching very closely the success story of Sia Colisi. And they decided to put pen to paper. We went down to Cape Town to witness exclusively the signing of the contract. Yeah. Marawa TV was there. Michael Yorkmark was here, the president of Rock Nation Sport in South Africa, in Cape Town. You'll hear it all live here on the show. In fact, let's find out what he had to say ahead of the signing. Well, what a, what a place to be for Marawa TV down in Cape Town. Historic occasion it is. And very rarely do you get such opportunities as well where history is being made and we're all here to witness it and be a part of it. As you know that uh, Sia Colisi, so much has been said about the captain of the Springboks and also the signing. Yes, I say it. The signing of the big one here. And that is why we got the president of Rock Nation, Michael Yorkmark, is here. Good to see you, Michael. Nice to see you as well. Yeah. Nice to see you. When you talk about Rock Nation Sport, and you talk about Sia Colisi, and you talk about the partnership and the gathering together of both these entities here. What are we talking about, actually? Well, we're, we're, we're talking about a great partnership. Yeah. Um, you know, I watched Sia in the finals of, of the World Cup, uh, and I, I was so taken with his story. Uh, I was so taken about how he articulated it. And from that moment, uh, I realized that um, Sia belonged with Rock Nation. Um, his values um, in life, his journey, his story, very consistent um, with the story of Rock Nation. Um, and, and his vision for how he wants to leverage his platform, how he wants to inspire people and motivate people, not just on the continent and in South Africa, but around the world, was something that was so inspiring for me. And, and so um, today truly is a historic day. It's an exciting day for Rock Nation. It's an exciting day for Sia his wife Rachel, their entire family. We're just so blessed uh, to have this opportunity to be here in Cape Town. It's my first visit. Unfortunately, I won't be here long, but I will be returning, I'm sure, many, many times in the future. Um, but, but just a great feeling. Yeah. When you talk about that story, and I think it's, it's a lot of things to a lot of people, there's a rugby player, but there's a background to the rugby player as well. Then there's a World Cup triumph. Then there's a fight against all odds. For you, what in all of that captivated you to say definitely we need to be with him you know for for me it was less about rugby yeah and more about his journey overcoming challenges you know he, he here's a guy that 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 people probably could never have imagined you know standing in japan holding the trophy for the world cup championship and living out a dream right because of the challenges that he overcame in life to get there. And so I think this story really is about overcoming challenges, dreaming, right, never giving up, being committed to what your goals and objectives are. And that's the inspiration truly behind this story. Um, and so whether it's an adult, whether it's a teenager, whether it's a young child, we can all be inspired, you know, by what C has achieved and so to me, that's where, you know, I felt connected with him. That's where Rock Nation felt connected with him. Again, um, less about rugby, more about the journey and more about overcoming the challenges during his journey to ultimately live out a dream, which he has had for many, many years. 
And obviously being in Cape Town, yeah, this is where he plays his club rugby. So a bit of an irony, but a, a good one to have, though. The expectations. Joins Rock Nation family. Was it an immediate yes from his side? I mean, let's just take it back now, because also from a human side, we would sure. want to know. You approach him and you say, listen, we're Rock Nation family. We want you to be part of the family. What does CS say to you? Well, you know, it was funny. Uh, we were just talking about the story uh, just a couple of minutes ago when we were sitting with Sia and Rachel. Uh, obviously, myself and, and one of our owners, Juan Perez, was with me watching the World Cup uh, finals. And we both were so enamored and taken with this story and said, you know what, gosh, if we could ever get in front of Sia and tell him our story, we think he would be interested in joining uh, Rock Nation. Um, interestingly enough, Sia and his wife Rachel had never heard about Rock Nation. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and so when they initially got the call from us, uh, they weren't quite sure what to expect. Yeah. And then obviously they did their homework and they understood the magnitude of this potential opportunity. But you know what? I give them a lot of credit. It wasn't as if they jumped too quickly. They wanted to understand what our vision was. They wanted to understand how we could help Sia, how we could help his family, how we could help amplify his story globally. And so C and I and Rachel spent a lot of time on the phone together uh, over the last couple of weeks. And then Sia obviously, as was reported, visited London and we spent some time in our new office uh, in the heart of London. And I think he started getting very excited and very comfortable. And he also spoke, quite frankly, to some of our clients. He had a great conversation with DJ Khaled, wow. um, who is, a, is obviously a very important part of our family. And, and Khaled spoke to him about what it meant to be part of a Rock Nation family what it meant to be part of our movement and and actually said listen we would be super super excited and honored for you to be part you know of rock nation so i think it was a combination of that um him getting to know us uh, as an organization um understanding the things that we've done for athletes and artists and then finally he said you know what this is you know this is a company that i should partner with um along and i must say with um, you know, Johan from Kinetic uh, Marketing uh, here in, 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 in South Africa because uh, Johan has been a big part of his life, you know, for, you know, the last couple of years and has really guided, you know, his business uh, aspirations, you know, off the pitch. Uh, now we get the opportunity to, to work closely with Johan as well. And, the combination of Rock Nation and Johan and Sia and Rachel and their entire family, I think is going to be very, very powerful. Because the one thing that people always ask, uh, again, Michael, is sports management, different languages for different people. You guys offer something quite unique. So when you say you, you're going on a sports management task, what exactly or which direction are you taking Sia right now? Because yes, he's a global figure because he's won a World Cup. But from what you do and what you specialize in, What's the trick? You know, at Rock Nation, we're storytellers. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's what really attracts us to see it. He's got a magnificent story that is a global story. Uh, and I don't care where you're living anywhere in the world, but when you hear about Sia's journey, you're going to be inspired and you're going to be motivated. It's now up to Rock Nation to help amplify that story, to tell that story in a meaningful way, um, and to make sure that we do it now. You know, he, he has a window of opportunity. This is his moment. Uh, and also, he speaks not only about himself, but he speaks about a nation, about a continent. You know, we, we now refer to Sia internally at Rock Nation as the face of modern Africa. I mean, think about it. Think about, you know, the history in this, on this continent. Think about the history in South Africa. Um, Go back to you know the late Nelson Mandela, and you know his vision of having rugby as a rainbow sport, yeah. right? Uh, as a sport that would unite a country um, with players uh, that were white and black, and now to have Sia um, be able to kind of take that torch. Um, he's living that vision that Mandela had, and now it's become a reality. And so it's up to us to educate the world and to showcase this continent, South Africa, this incredible nation, 
to the world through see his accomplishments and through his eyes. And so it's a big challenge for us, but, but it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity. And, and we're, we're super excited about being part of it. And, um, but we're going to take it one step at a time. Yeah. Without giving too much away, though, because storytelling involves somebody who's still here, who's still alive, who's still part of the dynamics of a growing democracy, which is South Africa. How would you envisage going on and telling that story? And when would, I don't know if you want to make it a movie, when would that be released? What, what can people expect from that front? Because even South Africans themselves probably haven't quite gotten into the sea of story yet. Sure. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're developing that strategy as we speak. Right. Um, you know, it's only been about, you know, 30 minutes since his official signing, although we've put some plans in place and we've been working on our strategy and our blueprint. But I think the, there, there's one word that really will describe how we approach this, and that's with authenticity, right? It's important for us to tell the real story. Yeah. And I know, having spoken to Sia and Rachel, that there are some people that understand where he's come from. There are some people that have been exposed to his journey. But a lot of what he went through as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult, has never been revealed. And so the untold story is the story that we're going to focus on. And I would, I, I would assume that over the next couple of months, you know, we will announce um, what that strategy looks like the platforms that, that we will be partnering with to help communicate that story on a global basis. But authenticity will, will be the backbone of the story that we're told, that, that is told. The real life story um, from Sia's lips um, and the things, quite frankly, that have never been told before. It would have been quite amazing, though, because post the match, there's a press conference. Usually they talk about tactics and talk about what went right to beat England by such a margin. Then you got Sky Sports. Again, usually we'll talk about tactics. You got CNN. Usually we'll talk about that, how you captured a World Cup. But exactly what you've been saying and exactly what Rock Nation is saying, they've been more captivated by the story behind the person, which in the rugby world is quite unique. Yes. But it's a unique person, it's a unique country. Yes, it is. And it's also a very big opportunity for you now to say, guys, we'll try and seal all of this so that you get it all in one voice. Yes. Is that something that no, excites you, Michael? No, no question. Yeah. And you know what was really interesting coming out of the World Cup? And, you know, I'm now living, you know, part time in, in yeah. London. Um, it was interesting how excited, even in a loss, the English players were. Because at the end of the day, obviously they wanted to win the World Cup. But if they couldn't win the World Cup, having South Africa walk away with the championship and seeing how important it was to this nation was something that every player on the England team recognized. And so even in defeat, okay, they were actually quite happy for the success that South Africa had at the World Cup, and especially for Sia, because everyone you know understands his story, everyone understands his journey, um, and everyone understands, quite frankly, what he stands for, right? Um, and so that, to me, was so unique. You don't see that often, but there was so much respect and admiration for what South Africa had to go through to get to that to that moment. Um, it was actually great to see. But you got some greats from the world of football. Eric Bailly, Man United. You've got Kevin De Bruyne, Man City. Yes. You've got Lukaku, who's moved over to Italy now. Yes. He's playing the best football of his career. Yes, he is. And um, they're all part of the Rock Nation family. That's the round ball that the world appreciates. You go to the oblong ball now, some, something completely different. It's the first time you bring in a rugby person into that space. Rock Nation, Jay-Z Incorporated, everybody talks about that. Everybody knows about the sign. Everybody knows about the footwear as well as the, the gear that they have for Rock Nation. Just from a commercial perspective, have you thought about what magnitude this gentleman called Sia Khaleesi would have in terms of that? I, I think there's going to be incredible opportunities. Yeah. You know, when you think about artists, when you think about celebrities, 
um, it's not about the sport that they're involved in or the stage that they perform on. It's typically about their story yeah. and about their success. You have a very unique individual here that is very articulate, that um, has an incredible story, yeah. that only wants to do good, only wants to inspire people and motivate people. That in itself makes him so attractive to companies all over the world that believe in inclusion and believe in diversity. Um, and as I said, you know, SIA is, is quite frankly the face of, of modern Africa. And this is such an important part of the world. So we see incredible opportunity. Um, but we need to be strategic and we need to be selective because SIA uh, himself is a premium brand. And so um, we're, we're not going to over commercialize him. We're going to look for the right opportunities in the right places with the right organizations that are as interested as Rock Nation is in telling his story the right way. Those are the companies that we're going to partner with. Thank you so much for spending time with us, Michael. Thank and you. I must say, great catch, wonderful human being, Thank and you. congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us on Marawit. Thank you. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> An amazing moment here, and, and do remember that this is a Marawa TV exclusive. Happened earlier today in Cape Town. Michael Yorkmark coming through all the way from the United States of America uh, for the signing. Just literally came down for the signature of Sia Kulisi on the contract to make sure that he becomes part and parcel of Rock Nation. My goodness, congratulations, Sia. And with that, if you don't believe us, Rock Nation earlier on today went viral and they released a little short video confirming, signing, and sealing. Check this out. We love you, South Africa, and we can achieve anything if we work together as one. Change it as Khaleesi. See you, Khaleesi. And South Africa, a rugby World Cup. Jesus! never listen to someone that tells you you can't make it. It's up to you and you alone. Ah, alone, alone. Oh, man, they talk about from his sweet dead to the entire world. In fact, to a World Cup champion. That's the story and the journey of Sia Kulis. It's about to break out. I don't even think he is prepared for this. I don't even think he's aware of what he's just allowed himself into here. But he's worked so hard. And I think every kid whether you're in Ezwite, whether you're in Mashu, wherever you are around the country, aspiring, hoping that rugby makes a difference, or any sporting code, this is a moment to sit back and say, well, 2019 has definitely been that for Sia Kolisi. Well, straight after that, Michael said his say, you heard what he said. What about the man of the moment here? Ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce to you a new Rock Nation man, Sia Kolisi. All right, welcome back. You heard from the president of Rock Nation Sport and, of course, the man that everybody's been talking about and the man behind the golden signature of sealing this deal, the captain of the Springboks, Sia Kulisi here. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, yeah, man's been traveling, eh? Yeah. But no bigger journey than getting a call from Rock Nation. And Michael says, you guys, you and Rachel had no idea no. who or what they no. were. No, no. We had, we had to ask people, people who were like, it's Rock Nation. Yeah. I was like, okay. What's that? What's that? Yeah. yeah. So then we had to research and we Googled and we found out. We were like, okay, wow, this is big. And then, yeah, and then we started. We had a FaceTime with Isaac and Michael, which was pretty cool, you know, to meet Michael, you know, and chat to them and see the, the fact that they had interest in, in us. Like, yeah. we were like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we were, because we knew how big this will be, not only for us, for the, a young kid um, in, in the township as well yeah. think, you know what, these are possible, you know, yeah. to be working with a company, with someone that you've listened to since we were kids, yeah. you know, yeah. So tell me though, you go on Google and you say Rock Nation, up pops Jay-Z. First uh, we tapped, then, we tapped Michael. Oh, Michael. Yoma, yeah. Yoma, because that's yeah. the person that wanted to talk right. to me. Then we looked, we were like, oh, hello. And then we see Rock Nation is 
link to it. To Jay Z, and yeah. then you look, oh, okay, cool. This is I'm it. Probably, and then my friends were like, are you having an album coming out? I'm like, no, they also have a sports <laughs> section. Yeah. And, and I think just the excitement from there, because now you re already know yeah. what, who and what you're dealing with. Yeah. And then you got DJ Khaled there, who's now calling you first name basis and saying, <laughs> You know, it's check crazy. out my pad here. Yeah, it's only just 46 <laughs> million <laughs> US dollars. How yeah. does that affect you, though, just personally, to think of the opportunity that this opens for you? Yeah, I mean, the first thing for me, um, I haven't been shy about it, other than looking after my family, yeah. is to touch as many lives as I can because of where I came from. And that's my motivation each and every single day, is to make sure I can create the opportunity that I never had was when, when I was young. and. I always wanted to tell my story and hopefully my story would inspire yeah. people and I wanted to do it here in South Africa. And now I know for a fact that Rock Nation can open doors for me globally around the world and that would mean so much more. And, then, and I'm hoping I can touch people around the world and I can, you know, whatever I, I, I make, I can bring back home and touch the lives that I want to touch. And if I can touch people overseas, that would also be amazing. So if I got a history book, I'm paging mm -hmm. history. Sia Kulisi, first black captain, <laughs> hold the <laughs> rugby yeah. world cup. Uh, Sia Kulisi, first black captain, rock nation, rugby in terms of sport. Yeah. So many other pages that you've made history on. Yeah. You know, sure, this must rank right up there because, like yeah. I was saying to Mike, uh, they've got Kevin De Bruyne, they've got Lukaku, they've got Eric Bailly, they've got a whole lot of players that are there. But in terms of rugby. The entire world, not South Africa, not Africa, the world will know that you are the story carrier of Rock Nation. Has that sunk in yet? Uh, not yet. Uh, we yeah. haven't thought about it. Obviously, just signing the deal now was yeah. huge. Um, but you know what I liked about them when they came to me? They didn't come to me because of my rugby. Yeah. They came to me because of the story and the person that I am and what I can, you know, I, they believe I can touch so many lives. and. You know, they went through, they called everybody to get me, and that already was like, okay, cool, these guys really believe my, my story can touch a lot of people. And I'm really looking forward to it. it, it it's, it's a different, you know, it's a different side of me where everybody else just focuses on the rugby now. They want to tell my story, amplify it, and let the whole world know of the good news that South Africa has, because I'm definitely not the only one. And I'm hoping that in this way, it will inspire me as well to start telling other people's story as well, allowing them. I mean, I was one of the people that witnessed the signing of that contract. Mm. You're holding that pen. Yeah. And you're about to make one of the biggest signings and deals of your life. Yeah. What's that feeling like, knowing that this is no Mickey Mouse yeah. contract? This is Rock Nation. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. It, I, it just makes me think of everything I dream and, and I've, yeah. I've, I've worked towards. And I never thought it would get to this, to be honest. I never dreamt of my of this in, in any way that I would be able to speak to an organization, be associated with an organization like this and a movement like this. And I sit there and I think, I'm like, you know, I, I, it's good that I, I dreamt when I was, yeah. you know, when I was young and it's good that I didn't stop. It's good that I didn't give up. And I thank my teammates as well, because to be honest, without them, I'm nothing. They've helped me yeah. achieve a lot of the things that I want to do. And the game of rugby as well. The disciplines that I've learned, you know, when I was young in the township where I had to make decisions whether to go with my friends here or to go to training. All of that come into my mind and and I think of my days walking to school with no shoes on, I didn't own a pair of socks, I couldn't eat and all of that now. We're lucky. And I was happy during yeah. that period and my parents gave me time and support and that's all I needed at the time. And yeah, that, that that all now, I'm thinking about it now, I'm thinking now, you know what, I can change someone else's narrative. I can give an opportunity to someone else. And and I have no doubt that Michael and the team will definitely help me, help me and my wife to to change and touch as many lives as we can. Does it humble you though, Sia? I, yeah. I know it's difficult to break into yeah. the you that is there because at times it's important to keep that ceiling and that electric fence around yourself. Yeah. But does that... Does that excite you? Does that humble you? Does it make you think? What does it make you think, actually? I don't know. I just thank God for I know yeah. it's not me. There is no ways in my human power that I have this. And my, my, my wife as well, she, she humbles me very quickly. Yeah. Quick, quick. Um, <laughs> Brings so it down to mother. Earth. Very quickly, yeah. very quickly. And, 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 and like, you know, I know for a fact, you know, I go to church and 
and that's where I find my strength and I believe that's where I'm guided and that's why I'm getting all this we getting all this blessing with my family because God is giving us this opportunity to be able to share share it with other people and that's exactly um, why I believe that everything has happened not because of me because I'm believing in someone so much higher than me yeah I mean there's a, there's a song that says exactly mm. what you're saying that success is nothing without somebody to share it with. 100% yeah. and now you you've got your wife Rachel to share it with you got yeah. your family to share it yeah. with now the entire world is going to be able to dip in and yeah. get a sense of that and the way they described it in terms of how they want to tell your story did that make you feel a bit more comfortable? You know, I yeah. know you're a bit uncomfortable with the book that was launched without your approval. Yeah, yeah. Does this... I, I love this you? because yeah. Rock Nation is allowing me to drive yes. my story. You know, he, I told him he's my, he's my quarterback because he has to do everything, <laughs> but he wants me He wants me to be the coach, you know. I've got a certain way. I don't want to change who I am. And my wife also knows we know what we're about and we don't want that to change. We still want to be C and Rachel and tell the story in a, and we still want to be, you know, normal. Everything must still be normal for us, but we want to tell it the way we want to tell it. But now, obviously, it's in a much bigger scale. They can open doors that we could never imagine of. And so, Michael just said, just tell us. They come and present something. If it doesn't work, then it's not working. Then we have to find a, a, a certain way. So it's not all Rock Nation saying, this is yeah. what we're doing. This is what we must do. So he'll present to me and I'll say, this is not working, this is yeah. perfect. And Does that give you a sense of comfort though? Yeah. So you got, a, you got somebody who is well trained yeah. in terms of what to do. So you got so many people now who'll be like, see, I want you to do this, yeah. I want you to do that, I want you to promote this, I want you to promote, I want you to wear this. But yet they don't take care of you. Yeah. But they want you to carry their yeah. brands through. Yeah. But the fact that you got somebody who's able to do this as Rock Nation, how does that sit with you? Because now yeah. you're not just going to be wearing something with the label on it, yeah. but those people don't take care of you. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I like it because I know everything will be, I'll be taken care yeah. of first and foremost. He's done it with much bigger stars. Sure. And then that gives me comfort as well to know that like I'm not starting off and this is something he's done for many years right. and I'm looking forward to it. And the fact that he he's secure enough to let me drive it makes gives me comfort. And yeah, and I know I'm gonna be well looked after, my family will be looked after, and, and, and that this is all in my best interest. Yeah. And and obviously the people that I wanna help out too. Have you learned to do the Rock Nation sign yet? I did, I did, I did, I did. And I learned about it, you know. Um, I learned Tell about it. Tell me more, yeah. It's, you know, it's on the clothing, yes. you know, it's a purple plane and, yeah. and the story behind, because I had to ask them, like, why is everybody making the, yeah. the sign? And they, they told me it's, um, when, when Mr. Jay-Z was young, he used to dream of, of being in a plane and to go see the world, you know, and he never knew if he could get to get there and and obviously finally he got the opportunity and that's where he got the inspiration from. And he used to sit at home and just throw paper planes. Yes. Yeah, so that's actually a paper plane and that's where it all came from. Now he owns private jets. I yeah, think. yeah, not paper you, planes anymore. <laughs> but you look forward to that moment, I'm sure, when you meet the yeah, real of man course. behind. Yeah, right. yeah, have yeah. You, have, have you internalized Nah, that? I haven't no, thought I'm about Jay -Z, it. Please meet my wife. This no, I haven't, I haven't thought about it. It will be huge. I mean, my friends were yeah. going mad for me. They were so happy for me. They're like, man, you, you're doing things that we never dreamed of in our lives and something that the, their kids would see and, and work, be able to work towards. You know what? We want to be like that. And I'm glad that we got this opportunity, to be, to be honest. And, and I really want to give it my best shot and work with them and, and reach heights that I've never been able to. So not just for yeah. me, for the other generation to know that this is all possible. Yeah. And because it's been done before by one of us. And, and I felt that you really were in the World Cup moment. You know, not only were you lifting Web Ellis at the time mm -hmm. in Japan, you yeah. lifted for the whole week. Yeah. On top yeah. of those buses, yeah. you were lifting it and nonstop. It almost looked like it was the first time you were lifting it, yeah. so that the people that you were passing at the time, every meter, every kilometer, yeah. you made it seem like this is the first moment you've got it. Yeah. And any other person would be like, hey, I'm tired of yeah. this, let me just pass it on. But what, what, what kept that momentum on yeah. for you? Because it said a lot about you. Yeah, you know, after the World Cup, I was like, because I'd given everything emotionally, the whole team, yeah. we, we were all sitting there. You know, you think you'll party hard, you know, we're just sitting there having a couple of drinks with the team. And I just went out, me and my wife, I went, like, took my kids and my dad was there. I'm like, guys, you guys can enjoy, I'm going to bed. I slept. 
And the coach had asked us before to play for South Africa and forget all our egos and our dreams. If you make a mistake, don't worry about yeah. it. Just get up and fight again because that's what we do sure. as South Africans. And the period we were in, you know, the gender violence, the xenophobia was happening. And we knew our country needed this more than anything else. And we fought this hard and we prayed, man. We prayed each and every, I did, I know, mm -hmm. that's all I lived in, I lived in prayer. And we got to achieve this. And we saw the videos of the people that were coming through mm -hmm. and how much they were backing us. And some people paid their last cent to come watch us play for, for us to achieve this moment. Yeah. And when I got that, I said, I want to give them 100% every single time when I lived there, I want every single person to feel that experience. Yeah. And that's what we did as a team. And I just stood there and I was finished. I won't lie to you, yeah. I was done. Yeah. When I sat down, you know, when you're driving the highway, then I'll get my energy again, then I'll go again, yeah. you know. And we had like a couple of guys swapping around. And, and I could, you know, I just wanted to give them everything because I can imagine how the people were shouting back at home. And without the people back here at home, we wouldn't have been able to achieve that. Well, you lifted an entire nation. You lifted the trophy. Mm -hmm. You lifted it on the bus. Mm -hmm. You carry on to lift mm -hmm. it. You've been to Anfield. You've met your favorite coach in Cape Town. <laughs> a couple of days later, you met him at Anfield, mm -hmm. playing against Napoli in the UEFA Champions League. I mean, those are big moments. Those are moments where you think back and you almost do this. Like yeah, this is yeah, me yeah, kind of thing. I mean, yeah. because now, the next thing you're going to be meeting the big boss of, of Rock Nation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all of this, see it. Yeah. And it all happens in such a short period of time. Yeah. But that's life, though. Yeah. And you've been able to carry South Africa right through. And we've watched you, all your interviews, Sky, CNN, you yeah. name it. We were there listening. And you've been a remarkable servant. Thank we you. We want to congratulate you. This is Thank a you. huge moment for you. Thank you. And uh, carry it with the dignity Thank that you. it deserves. I'll do. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Maybe and just a final word of thanks yeah, to no. all of your South Africans yeah. that have been following you. Yes. So I say thank you so much, Dabulela. Um, gave the messages, and gave videos, and yeah, for for everything that you guys have given us as a team, first and foremost, there's no ways we could have achieved what we wanted to achieve without you guys. You guys have been amazing, and to all the South Africans around the world, you know, we've had messages, and yeah, for on my, for for my part, I'm just gonna say thank you to my people, family, my wife Rachel, my my kids. Nick and Kezia and obviously my daughter, I mean my brother and sister as well. And all I want to do is just be a role model to all of you and I want to be the best man I can for my, for, for, my, for my wife and to my family, church family, everybody. Everything has been amazing. You, every, every single day that you guys have supported me, it's helped me reach all the, the levels and heights and every success is for, for every, every single person that's supporting me, every person that's praying for me. So yeah, and like I always say, um, if we can take anything from what we did as a team, um, is the fact that if we can come from different backgrounds, different races, and we have different dreams, different goals on the field, and we can all focus into one, what Coach Rassi brought as a plan for us to achieve what we wanted to achieve. We put everything else aside and put South Africa first and we put the Springbok first, and we achieved what we wanted to do. And I think that's when we're strong in South Africa. We put all our egos aside, we do everything we can to make the country better, make South Africa number one. We, even if you have, if the people have agreed on this, you don't agree with this, you give it your best to make sure that South Africa is number one. So yeah, thank you for everything, I appreciate it. And I'm hoping this opportunity will not only be good for me and my family, it will be good for everybody else and any kid that was dreamed of opportunity like this, that they know now it's possible because it's been done by a fellow South African. So thank you guys. All right, there he is, just signing off there, <laughs> joining the Rock Nation family. Sia is the captain of the Springboks. All right, it is a Thursday night live, and oh, what a day it's turned out to be. Cape Town, back in Johannesburg, the signing has all happened, and I can see social media going a buzz. I think people are just more in disbelief in terms of Sia and more excited about him and the future and what lies ahead. All right, keep those messages flowing through as far as the social media is concerned. Hashtag Marawa TV, give us your thoughts, give us your opinions, and everything that goes with that. All right, back here now in our set in studio. Remember the name, Eric, September. Hey, household name in football. Good to see you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, Robs, and greetings to everyone. You still play the game? A little bit? I do, a little bit. Yeah. 
And I will be playing again. When? On the 29th. Because the 26th to the 29th, we've got the tournament. All the legions of Matlasana community, mm -hmm. we came together. It's me from Ogni and Ghana, Brian Spapule from Kuma, mm -hmm. Brandon Silent and Skalvik from Alabama, mm -hmm. Dino Glow and Hassan Villagas from Jobetin. So we're making uh, festivities yeah. to sporting codes of all sorts. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Hassant Villagazi. Now, there's a name uh, that we haven't heard for the longest time. He's Stias Hassant, eh? Yes. Uh, Dai Hassant Villagazi. But <laughs> the one thing that I, I've always admired is you fighting against all odds. And that car accident, I thought you couldn't play anymore. Can you still play? Or you, you are four signs? Ah, young fools. I can <laughs> still play, but any a talk. Yeah. Yeah. Mankatala, you can see with Lomuntu. Yeah. Yeah. But w what hurts but, uh, the most, though, for you? My left side after an accident when I numb. Yeah. It's only now that I've gained consciousness on my left side. Yeah. Yes. So a bit of feeling that you can feel now. Yes. Okay, so now being a clap by you on the one side, you wouldn't ah, feel anything. I wouldn't feel anything. That's crazy. Yes. And the doctors always struggle to try and get it right. I know that there was a whole issue with the road accident fund and the people, hey, yeah, people disappeared. They went to Australia and so on. Were you ever able to settle that case? No. Because my representatives, after... I complained, asking for, seeking for help. Mm. Someone who represented me, he went with his family to Austria. Mm. So they left with money for dead people, crippled people like me. A lot of people, they went to the police station and opened cases about him. After they had the mm. confidence to do that, the one they wrote it on the newspaper after I complained. Mm. So now the representatives who are representing me through the help of City Press, they called me on the 1st of September and they told me he's been found, but because he had money from different banks all over the world, he wanted to transfer the money from one place to the other and they realized he was a South African, so they wanted verification from this side. And the public prosecution, they said no, because this person, we've been looking for him, mm. don't transfer that money to him. We can either transfer it to law society so that all the people who were victims of him can get their money back. Mm. And that accident changed my life completely because I got the accident immediately three months after our democracy. Mm. So we fought hard to find democracy. After we received it, I never enjoyed it up mm. till today. Because they still owe you money. Yes. I think the last time, you know, they were talking about 1.4 million, but I'm sure it's more. You can share with us whatever you can. I know that even Carte Blanche ran a story about this individual here uh, that we're talking about. Yes. We don't have to mention the person. You can mention if you feel like it's important. But what does that make you feel like? Because what is owed to you? I always say that you have to always fight for it. Is it still worth the fight? Yeah. It makes me feel sad because maybe I would have played overseas. Yeah. And... I'd be helping many people like I always did and like I was always helped. Mm. So it's a norm that it's a legacy that we were brought up with. For example, what I'm talking about, BMX Putzan. Yes. We were schooling together. Stephen. Stephen Putzan. Yeah. We were scholars at another mine school. Mm. We were sit I grew up in a Mine had the uh, headquarters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So we were staying there. And what happened is we played from junior primary together as yeah. friends. You we were staying in the farm near Oakney. Yeah. So we were staying at Scom Plus and we were Scom boys. So we were friends because of soccer. Right. When I started going to the senior primary and high school, mm. we were taken back to the township. We stayed at the township now. Right. And now when we stayed in the township, what happened is I saw PMX coming. Mm. Because the club was of Lokni and Zebras by then, when he played Men's Day Cup with Pups, mm. beating Pups one nil, playing with Swallows from 80, 79, we played Arcadia in the mm. 80, we played Swallows. I was still a youngster. When I played to the second team of the Oknian Zawas that was representing Western Transvaal by then, mm. BMX came. He went straight to the first team. I said, ah, I'm scared to play in the first team. He says to me, you scared to play in the first team? We were playing together at school. Hey, I felt like I'm a coward. Yeah. So I agreed when the oldies said I must go play in the first team. Yeah. But I was shaky then. You were nervous then? I was nervous. I was 14. Yeah. So the following year, we were registered at 82 when I did 15, 16 years. So I registered in the first team. That's why I started playing, taking it serious now that uh, this future I am. So PMX, because of we played together as youngsters. Yeah. I took him and he stayed with me at home. After he said, you must play in the first team because he was marveling. Yeah. So I had to put him next to me so that I wasn't be scared. <laughs> he must tell me how he does. Because he was a brilliant player. I remember he played for Tlaxob City as well. And went to Free State Stars. Stars, yeah. And then Orlando Pirates. Pirates. Yes. So he was a brilliant player. There was no awkward ball yeah. with him. But, I mean, just to quickly fast track so, everything that happened. So, the, the accident happens, you were playing for who at the time? For Chiefs. You were Let me finish off this yeah. next okay. story. Cool. Because of good heart yeah. that we were brought, that I saw our elders treating other people no matter who yeah. they are. That's the spirit that I grew up with. That's why I took him and stayed with him. Sure. And we went together until we reached the highest level of football yeah. in South Africa by then. Meaning, to help was something that is not uncommon. It was a common thing to be done, mm. which opened ways for me. But now, I was never helped after I had an accident. By anybody? I mean, obviously, mean, yeah. I, I, I never received my insurance, my everything, from the league mm. itself. And then the, the accident as well. My representative, he went away with my money. Right. Because after the accident, people used to claim that I'm not well. They, th they thought you were mad upstairs. They thought I was mad upstairs because yeah. of the things that I used to tell them that I did while I was sick. Mm. But, and but, now but you after were affected I, though. You were affected mentally. Not, not that it was yes. per se, yes. you know, but what they were saying was not true. It wasn't a true reflection of you as a person. But it's easy to go you know, uh, about somebody and lie about them. Yes. But it was never true about you. But did that hurt you? How, how, how much did that hurt you, though? Because I was still young. I had a house. I'm, I stayed in Don Park, yes. my own house. And just before democracy in 93, I had an accident in 94. So the thing that I did, I was ambitious. Yeah. Because when I joined Chiefs, the, f the last team that I played for when I got an accident, I joined Chiefs at quarter to five. Eight o'clock, I was inside the fleet playing for them. And it was the first day I hear that they wanted me mm. from Sundowns to Chiefs. So I told Natasha, if you're no more happy with me, out of the blue, going to the office without any, knowing anything. Mm. And yet the negotiations were going while I, don't, I didn't know 
So I went straight there on the last day of registration. The yes. window period was, it was the last. Yeah. I said, why are you ill? I feel like I'm not treated well. Yeah. What's the problem? If you don't want me in your team anymore, take me to AC Milan now. I can show you I can compete hey. for a first team place with Marco van Basten. I'm not scared. She said, you say so? I said, yes. Immediately, Luis Chaguani came in and he was chief's PRO by yes. then. So he, she asked me to go outside. After she said, well, oh, so you're brave enough, even in Italy, you can play against fighting for position with Mark. Okay, good. They came in to fetch you. I said, ah, doctor was telling me the truth because we were friends and we were always, we were attending so we to college yeah. together. I said, doctor was telling the truth, in other words, that chiefs don't need any other person other than you to, as a striker, yeah. according to Jeff Butler. I said, yeah. I said, no, it's fine. So I went. The very same night I played, we won 4-0. I scored two goals. In the chiefs' colors now? Yes. So they didn't want... I've never trained with them. I've never... <laughs> I had a big heart, man. I was brave enough. Hey, this guy. So firstly, you, 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 you keen to go to Italy. You keen to compete with Marco van Basten. You, you want to play. Yes. So, so I think you had a great spell at Chiefs. There was a time where you were scoring, I think you had about seven goals and 12 games. Uh, things were just happening and, and, and the fans loved you. Yes. You were there, Nabafana Bashama, Pam, and everything was great. Yes. You know. would, would you say that was almost like the highlight yes. of your career? It does. Being at Kaiser Chiefs. Yes. Because the very same season we won the Bob Save and the league. Yeah. And we represented South Africa at CAF by then, yeah. the following year, the following season. And I even heard being spoken about mm. on in that CAF representation. I scored seven goals for, for hey. Chiefs. We we got out from last 16 when we were beaten by Samalek with away goal difference yeah. in Egypt. And the commentators, they said after the game with Samalek, while it still it was still played by yeah. Emmanuel Amunike and them. Yes, yes. So, they said the team that's going to win between Chiefs and Zamalek are going to win this trophy. And Zamalek won because they beat us with an away goal. So I think you were the first player as well at Chiefs to score in the Champions League. Yes. Yeah. All right. I mean, we... And the last to score again in yeah. the very same Champions League that we started in that season. Yeah. Yes. Because now, at one stage, Obviously, there the, are the, a lot of things that happen in the life of, of, of Eric September that we'll never be able to, to talk about in one sitting. Now, the most important thing for you, because the car accident, or let me just say the accident itself, yes. was a life-changing situation that happened for you. And you've spelt it out and you talk about it and, and you, you're still emotional about it because there are people that owe you stuff around the accident that is due to you. Yes. So car accident, injuries, people disappearing from you. Because when you're famous, people love you. When you're going through a difficult time, there's nobody that's there. You know, you're there on your own. Hey, Bob. And then there's this thing called prison. Yes. That comes your way. Now, in all of this, and, and part of the reason why, again, we talked earlier about the 16 days of activism and the meaning thereof. And very few people would ever want to come out and say, hey, I put my hand up. I was wrong. I did wrong. And I'm able to try and assist society because now I'm a better person. How that period, Eric, would have been the most difficult of your life. But you took ownership of it. Yeah, hey. <clears throat> Firstly, Pops, I want to encourage and open the eyes of our youngsters yeah. to these players. 
You see, when things are good, don't be overconfident and end up thinking you can call everything into existence. No. You must always go down yeah. and live a normal life like anyone. Be As humble. if you're not into... Be humble. Humble yeah. yourself. In a sense that you'll end up not listening to people and thinking that because the world likes you mm. everywhere you are, mm. the world is yours. Mm. Uh, that's where the mistakes will come. You won't even see the signs that can lead you into trouble. Mm. Because women, they like good things. Mm. And that most dangerous people, if you're not aware of how you do your things, mm. Because you get lost, you are liked by everyone, you are admired, you dress nice, you look nice, mm. you can play, you can score, you can get everything that you need money for mm. to live a good life. So those things, they will lead you astray. Mm. And once you get out of the way, you are lost. Mm. You will be living like a zombie, pleasing people, not knowing difference between right and wrong and getting wrong company and that will lead you because at one stage before going to prison everywhere I went I was treated like a son of the king mm. superstar. a superstar yeah. and everyone was wanted to be part of my life yeah because after the accident, I was always helped. Because people felt very bad about me. Mm. Because Kaiser, he paid me until my contract ended. Mm. So he's a man of honor. Because he, he, he honored his contract with you. Yes. Uh, other after clubs the decided they I don't want anything play. to do with you. Yeah. While I didn't play. Yeah. But I don't know now about the insurance from the league whether did he get it or not if he didn't get it let him look for it because the league will pay him mm. and he must pay me right if he didn't get it let him get it for me that i can have closure yeah yeah so that is what is happening with me right now mm. now because people were treating me good and i was getting things without working while i i was used to getting things after I've worked for. Right, right. I was remunerated for my rendered services. Yeah. So after the accident, I felt I still have got age on my side. That was 27 years. Age was still on my side and I'm just seated there. So I felt dead and dead. Mm. When I woke from hospital, Lucas and Chipa are in England playing for top teams there. I said to myself, oh, Lord, would you help me that I can at least play for a year or two? Mm. Just for, not for money, but for that inner peace. Right. That satisfaction that you get while you're inside the field of play. But what, what, what do you regret the most, though? And when, when, when you look back yes. to that period, and we've been going through, as, as South Africa, going through a period every single day, social media, uh, there's a... People stabbing their their, their partners, uh, people going missing. Uh, there's there's death on a regular basis, and this is from men to women, right? So when you were when you were given a sentence of what twenty seven years yes. in prison, yes. right? And the primary one being for murder, right? Yes. For you, you 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 accepted it in the court of law. Am I correct? Or, yes. Yeah. So in, in your acceptance of that and, and digesting what has happened, Eric, did you have enough time to reason? And what is Eric today in 2019 after that? No, I never had uh, time to reason. Yeah. Because first and foremost, the, the real Eric proved himself. Mm. Because that thing, it happened... 
not inside of Africa. We were just the two of us, me and my wife, my then wife. Yeah. Yes, my son's deceased mother. Right. And then what happened? I drove because I was from Cape Town. Mm. I drove from where the incident took place mm. to my home and I told my parents, I told my mom, my mom and my sister, they took me to the police. Mm. Because it's something that I never thought I would do in life. Mm. That I, ne I was always speaking against. Mm. And at the end of the day, something has led me into doing it. Would you say it was anger? Because in, in, in part of trying to learn from your experience is to figure the signs. Because like you're saying, a gentleman by all means, at all times. But then it gets to a moment where you lose it, right? And then you obviously commit the biggest crime there is to commit. For you, what would you say triggers that moment? You know, so that if your experience can help somebody else who maybe finds themselves in a similar position to say, no, 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 no. There's a different way to resolve conflict with your partner. Yes. Yeah. What would that be, though, from, from, from your learning? First and foremost, uh, cops. Yeah. I was used to doing things for people. Yeah. And things were done for me. And that, it was not sitting well with me. Mm. And according to the people that are close to me, my family and them, who were always supportive during good times and bad times, mm. they told me I, I, I was short-tempered after the accident. Mm. And I would get tired when I talk. And I would forget something that we agreed on yesterday. Sure. Today when we speak, I forgot that we said we agreed on this matter. Mm. So now what happened is, I had to adjust to the situation. Mm. And I cannot write everything that I'm talking with people or agreeing with people when we talk. Mm. So that's, that's the weakness that they told me I had. But now I didn't look any, at any wrongs with my partner. Mm. That's why even today, that's why after it happened, it was something that I never planned. Mm. Because I don't want to go further into the judicial matters right. in this mm. atmosphere we are at. Yeah. Because we're here to encourage the youngsters, mm. whether in good times or in bad times, once they have got something that they feel is not right with them and their partners, communication is vital. Mm. And honesty is the most important one. Because if you are not transparent to each other, which is the first principle of development, there's no way you will know what is wrong and what is not right. So in that fashion, they won't be able to solve their conflicts. Mm. But to find solutions, they must have ways to attend to their problems in open, honest spirit. Mm. And by so doing, they'll be, they'll, they'll, they'll avoid many hiccups that mm. other people have undergone. So of the 27 years that you were convicted, you, you served 13? Uh, I was convicted for 27 years. I served nine years. Nine years? Yes. Okay. But the other season, it was for correcting the institution in other ways. Because I was supposed to come out on December 2019. Yeah. But because of the World Cup was playing in April. Yes. From April here in South Africa. Yeah. Was it from April? Or uh, June, May, July. June, July. June, July. Yes. And they held me on there oh. because they said, this person, if he goes, what are we going to do? This place is going to be rotten again. Because so I was... you were helping the, 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 the inmates? Yes. And you were conducting uh, classes inside the prison? Yes. So you would have only been coming out of jail December, now? Uh, 2019? No. No, no, no. It couldn't have been. 
they couldn't. Yeah, but you came out in 2010. I came out in 2010. I yeah. was supposed to come out in 2009. Yeah, okay, okay. So they held me on there for peace sake there. Wow. Because during my departure, a weekend before they made a farewell, a big farewell for me. Have you ever seen that? Someone leaving prison and they make a big farewell for him. The management and yeah. everyone. But, but obviously you had done something to change the lives of the inmates. Very because you, you, you were able to acknowledge the wrongs that you had done. You were able to come to terms yes. with all of that that you had done wrong. So you were trying to say to the people in prison that don't be... Don't be like me. Don't do that that I have done wrong. Yes. You know, because it's a heavy price and a heavy burden. There's a family, obviously, that has lost a loved one. You have lost a loved one. Yes. But you were the cause of that. Yes. And, and, and that is what you had to live with yes. right throughout. Yes. Right after the break, uh, I want to get a sense of where Eric September is at. You know, he's a man who speaks, as I say, does the best he can as far as community work is concerned, has served the time behind bars. 27 years he was convicted for, but he's always here to tell the story. I believe that there's a book as well that is pending. He'll tell us when can we expect that book to come out so that we learn more from him. Only every once in a while, there's a game like this one. One that's always been a showdown between Bundesliga heavyweights. This is what the German game is all about. One that once again has become a top of the table clash. How well taken was that? Absolutely wonderful. One you simply can't miss. Borussia Mönchengladbach versus FC Bayern München. All right, looking forward to that game. Oof, I mean, you talk about top of the table. Uh, things aren't going as well. <laughs> for Bayern Munich this season uh, in the Bundesliga as they had hoped things would go well for them. Uh, in fact, we're going to confirm for you the top of the table as far as the uh, Bundesliga is uh, concerned. So top of the table clash then, uh, Mönchen Gladbach as well as uh, Bayern Munich who are in position number four. Uh, with 24 points there. So it's a case of uh, can they break into the 30 point uh, barrier there? Can uh, Muchen Gladbach uh, will have to wait and see for the weekend and confirm all of that? So Schalke, uh, Labour Cousin, there's also another game that we will be looking forward to number three uh, versus number seven. The beginning of Advent was greeted by an emotional match day 13. Dortmund returned to winning ways in the capital. Leverkusen claimed a surprise result in Munich. Plenty of players caught the eye. Here's our team of the week. Between the sticks is Leverkusen's Lukas Radetzky. The flying Finn shone as the Werks Elf 1-2-1 in Munich. The keeper frustrated Bayern's attackers time and time again. Lewandowski! Oh, and Radetzky! Great save it was, and again! This time to deny Thomas Müller! Magnificent. The back line consists of Augsburg's Philipp Max, Schalke's Ozan Kabak and Dortmund's Ashraf Hakimi. He created Azard's goal to make it 2-0 against Hertha. Taza! Brilliant Dortmund goal! Julian Brandt laid the opener on a silver platter for Jadon Sancho. Dortmund won 2-1 and inflicted a defeat on Jurgen Klinsmann on his Hertha Berlin debut. Alongside Brandt in the middle are Schalke's Armin Arit and Leipzig's... Tabitza! It's 2! He made it 2-0 as they won 3-2 in Paderborn. A real rocket! On the opposite flank is Leon Bailey, who backed a brace against Bayern. And Bailey! Kevin Folland created both of Bailey's goals perfectly. The Jamaican backed the opener and went on to also score the winner as they beat the record champions 2-1. A great performance. Bailey has done it again! It's incredible! Icy call on this November night. Kevin Folland is on the left. He's joined on the opposite flank by... Rashica! Oh, yes! Milot Rashica with his second of the game! 
Bremen's Milot Rashica. His brace gave his team a 3-2 win in Wolfsburg. And through the middle, Briel Embolo. And Embolo has started back, tucks it home. Tabletop as Gladbach won 4-2 against Freiburg. Embolo claimed one assist and scored twice himself. High pressing from Gladbach and it might pay dividends. It does for Embolo. And here it is again, our team of the week for match day 13. This story begins with a sunset over the Rhine. Absolute poetry. Epic theater as the Bayer Cross lights up. Lucas Delario produces a moment of magic. A poem with two sides. Wonderful scenes at the Bayer Arena. Good finishing from Kabak. Kevin Follans, brilliant. A novel in 90 minutes. Football is more than just a game. Bayer 04 Leverkusen versus FC Schalke 04. All right, you let us know uh, which uh, side you're going to be uh, supporting over the weekend. Uh, but definitely, as far as the top of the table is concerned, come uh, Monday, a couple of uh, places would have changed and positions uh, would have moved around as well. Now, Leon Bailey, a youngster, Jamaican, in fact, has been causing a scene as far as Bundesliga football is concerned. Uh, we'll give you a little taste of it here because I'm sure Eric September, who's sitting right here, uh, can appreciate a little bit of what youngsters can do at a professional level. You haven't heard about him. Here he is. Now it's the visitor's turn. And Bailey! It's incredible! Now, for that great moment, Leon Bailey. And Bailey! Leverkusen in front with only 10 minutes on the clock. The pressure applied by Diaby. And look at the time it took, not very long at all, as it worked its way through Fonant. And then Bailey said thank you very much, all in 9.6 seconds. Lewandowski left it away by Arangis. And now Leverkusen in counter-attacking mode, Fonant. And it's Bailey, and Javi Martinez doesn't have the pace to stay with him. Bailey has scored again! It's incredible! Leon Bailey at the double. Just when it looked as though Bayern might be onto something, Arangi sweeping up, and it's all happened in a blink of an eye. And I do wonder if there's some sort of 10 second rule that Peter Bosch has in place in terms of winning the ball and then scoring. An evening to live long in the memory for the men from the Rheinland. Yeah. I saw you admiring that, eh? <laughs> That'll take you back to your play days. Hey, hey, very, very much. And I like the way the young man is converting those chances because he uses right and left. left. Yeah. The same way. Because if you come from this side, you put it there, you stretch him. Yeah. But the ball is faster than the keeper. So if it's far on target and it's far away, yeah. he won't reach that ball. So, Tina, why aren't we playing 22-year-olds? Why aren't we playing 19-year-olds? What is our problem? I fail to understand because when we won the league with Cosmos, my first day as a professional player, Thomas was just 14 years old. Madikha. Madikha, yeah. Hassan was 18. I was 20. 19, 20. Sheikh Kwaben was 20. Machens was 20. Basil Kwangwa, section 10. Yeah. From Pretoria Kelly, he was 20. So majority of the youngsters we were mixed with experienced seasoned players, yeah. Jomosono, Webster Dichave, Tash Mukwebo. Yeah. Oh, we had Pito and Black Sunday, mm -hmm. KK Sono. Yeah. So it was a mixture of youth plus maturity, which is very, very, very skillful and talented. So we played in a star-studded team there. And but where those we, stars now? We were given, surely the guys we were given freedom play. to express ourselves. Yeah. But we played according to instruction because that Scottish man, Roy Matthews, he, he was not laughing with anyone. He just needed what yeah. he wanted, how you want you to play, and you had to follow the, the instructions of the coach. You got about a minute or so left. For you, your greatest highlight, in your playing career would be what? 
Winning the league as a first year. Winning the league. Winning the league in my first year as a professional player and playing against Pirates, my first official game, and scoring against Pirates. Well, I can see you take great pride and pleasure. Yeah, Pirates. You hated them that much at the time. No, when I got an accident, I went home to go and report to my parents yeah. that I'm joining Pirates. I want to join Pirates because they wanted me since 1988. Right. So I was always scared to play for Pirates or Chiefs. I said, no, I don't want to sit on the bench. Those teams are big teams yeah. and they got big name players. Uh, yeah, I'm starting with my age group at Cosmos. That's why I chose Cosmos. And because Jomo spoke directly to me, that yeah. come and how about playing with me in my team? I said, no, that will be fine to play with the, great, the king, the Black Prince. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, you've had so, it, and, and, and that's that, that's part of the story. I want to quickly ask you. Yes. You know, having having played for the Cosmos's Sundowns, Kaiser Chiefs, Bafana Bafana. Yes. Um, because you were an integral part of Bafana Bafana. You were what we needed as far as the strikers concerned. Yes. You in the process of writing a book. Yes. When is it coming out? Hopefully. Uh, hopefully in. January, if not... Next year, 2020? 2020. Hey, man. Yes. What does that cover mostly? Is it, is it more Eric September, the football player? Eric September, the injured player? Eric September, the man who was in prison, who came out a better person? What does it cover the most? It covers all. Everything? Everything. How honest are you in that book? Rob... I can lie to you, but I cannot lie to myself. No, Zog. I'm buying that book. That's all I needed to hear. That's all I needed to hear. I cannot lie to myself. After the life that I lived and the routine, the experience that I gained, yeah. there's no turning back. There's no time to play jokes or lie. Yeah. Oh. Because that place is not a place that you can... Relax and sit on your laurels. You so, pray, you thank the Lord for every night or day that is giving you an opportunity. Talk about prison. Yes. Okay. Because what we've agreed to do, and that's why we don't want to tell too much of the story, mm. is that when the book is out, he'll tell us, and you'll be the consumer of, when I say us, you being a part of it, he's going to come through and tell us about the book. Tell us about the life inside of prison. Huh. Yeah. He'll tell us about that. So and the opportunities that you miss outside. Outside. For spending time. Inside. Inside doing nothing. Yo. It's an amazing story. It's a fascinating one. And like we say right here on Marawa TV, 16 days of activism should be the entire year. 16 days should just be to commemorate. But every single day, please take care of each other. Take care of your partners. Take care of everything that you do. And once again, salute to you, Sia Colisi. Salute to you, Rock Nation. Salute, Eric September. Catch you again next time.